Uh, th thanks very much for those comments. And you know, I, you know, Lisa's, uh, Lisa Margolis is not here with us now, but as I think you can tell from Bob's remark, this is a family that is deeply committed not only to Duke, but to uh, improving the health of Americans and people around the world. And this was actually an easy choice for, for me and for Greg Daniel. I think a lot of people who uh, are here in the room today came over with us from the, the Brookings Institution most recently because this opportunity is unique. Uh, if you look around the room, um, you'll see people who bring, I think, everything together that's needed to get to better uh, policy, to get to better health and health care uh, for Americans and people around the world. Um, my own career kind of has been lucky enough to span several different uh, ways of making a difference in, in health policy and health. Uh, I started out in, in academics and in economics at, at Stanford and uh, by some, uh, you know, life is a lot about serendipity. I uh, started working in the, the Clinton administration on some new approaches to, to financing and, and delivering health care uh, that, that brought us, brought me into touch for the first time with uh, which is what can happen in, in policy. And I know for those of you who have uh, uh, been watching the news lately, you know, it can seem pretty uh, uh, frustrating and cynical. You know, why are people uh, uh, talking about what they're talking about? Why aren't they really working on the important problems? Uh, one of the things that, that we've noticed, though, in, our, in my time in Washington and some of the colleagues colleagues that uh, I've worked with there who are now part of the center uh, is that there are some, some people who are really committed on both sides of the aisle to trying to make health care work better. And the hard part is uh, just dealing with political constraints, dealing with um, uh, good evidence, uh, the, the challenges of bringing good practical evidence actually to bear and give you confidence that the policies that you're implementing really are going to have the uh, uh, intended effects. Uh, and so what we want to do with this center uh, is bring together, as, as, uh, as, as Bob said, and this was Bob's, I think, uh, inspiration and, and, and vision for, for supporting this effort, uh, the world-leading expertise at this institution. And Duke is already having a big impact on, on policy. Many of the people in this room uh, I got to know well during my time in Washington and the Clinton administration, the Bush administration, at FDA, at CMS, and uh, subsequently at Brookings. Um, uh, but what we really haven't been able to do is put it all together. So uniquely, uh, this center is going to have a major Washington presence. We've already established uh, uh, an office there. Uh, it's going to have a, a presence here in, uh, here in Durham, not as a separate standalone um, uh, department or, or, or program, uh, but as an integrator with all of the activities that are taking place at Duke. And you know, no need to, to look at the, the details on this slide. Uh, you know, we're, we're kind of running ahead of schedule, I should say, to uh, our Initial plan, uh, Sally Cornblow is here, uh, um, was that we were going to spend this first year meeting with people, getting to know the, the faculty and the best opportunities, and aiming for kind of a, a strategic plan launch around like January of 2017 after a year of uh, uh, figuring out what, what the best opportunities are. And I can tell you, we still have barely scraped the surface in terms of the opportunities at Duke. There are more parts of this university uh, where we are going to be um, establishing some further uh, uh, joint programs and economics. Uh, in other social sciences, uh, uh, in nursing. I think some of these programs are represented here today. Uh, but we w had so much of a response from the faculty, and you're going to hear from many of them uh, during the course of this afternoon, uh, that we felt like we had enough to get together our initial strategic plan. And this is going to be a dynamic process. I've been pretty lucky in my life to be able to work with a lot of smart people who are really committed to doing things well. A combination of heart uh, and mind uh, and and, and the capacity to make a difference. Uh, I have never seen an opportunity like what Duke uh, can bring to these issues. Uh, there are a lot of health policy programs out there. Most of them are either based in a medical school or, or based in a public policy school or a pharmacy school or something like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. They're all doing good work. Uh, there is no program that has an opportunity to draw on such a breadth and depth of expertise from all disciplines uh, in uh, an academic environment as this one does. And no program that has so much going for it, going in, uh, in terms 
terms of the faculty expertise and capabilities. Uh, as you can see, if you can read the microprint on this slide, uh, we have uh, uh, founding faculty, again, many of whom you're going to hear from today, uh, representing a very diverse parts of, of the campus, uh, DCRI and the, uh, the medical center, uh, the business school, the law school, the public policy school, uh, global health programs, uh, other programs with, uh, uh, with undergraduates and the like. Uh, we have uh, a staff that, that is bringing some uh, additional capabilities to the center uh, and to hopefully all of your work around health policy, but it is staff that is often and frequently going to be co-located and co-funded with some of these existing programs so that we can build up and build on the existing infrastructure at Duke to do more uh, in making a difference uh, in, in health policy. Uh, and uh, we're going to continue to grow. So this is still very early stages for us. Uh, these two pictures here are, are respectively uh, what's going to be our, uh, our main offices uh, here on the Duke campus at a new uh, building that's part of uh, uh, the, the business school at Fuqua. Uh, it doesn't open uh, really until what, January, February, so a little bit uh, off from that. Uh, I think because we're running ahead of schedule uh, uh, on uh, getting these uh, uh, actual uh, strategic plan initiatives off the ground. Uh, down below that is uh, what will be our, our main offices in, in Washington, D.C., thanks to uh, not just the, the efforts that um, uh, we've been able to put together here in the center around supporting very policy relevant work, working with agencies like FDA and CMS and uh, NIH and uh, the, the committees on, on Capitol Hill that are dealing with policy issues, uh, uh, but also a, a lot of the expertise that uh, uh, many of the faculty have brought in other areas besides health policy. We're gonna have a stronger presence for Duke generally in Washington and what we're doing on health policy can hopefully be a, a reinforcer to activities around environmental policy, energy policy, many other areas where uh, Duke faculty are, are, are leading the world and, and uh, can have impact. Uh, by the way, I think that picture may be taken from the new Trump uh, Tower in, uh, in Washington. We're going to be right across the street on, uh, uh, on Pennsylvania Avenue. Um, so we are still in the early stages of, of getting this program off the ground. Uh, but the main thing I wanted to emphasize is that you know I've had a chance to work with a lot of organizations in government, out of government, in academics, uh, uh, in the private sector. Uh, and this is truly unique. Um, we're just starting to, to, to tap into the, the true capabilities that exist here, uh, as we said in our mission, uh, to improve health and improve health care through evidence-based, relevant uh, policy-related research and implementation. Duke has the capacity to do all of that, and I think that's what you're going to hear more about this afternoon. So what we're going to talk about today is the start. Uh, we've got some major, uh, what we're calling, work streams underway around improving healthcare delivery, some of the issues that Bob touched on, around improving biomedical innovation to bring uh, better treatments to patients uh, at a more affordable cost and, and faster, uh, around education uh, for undergraduates, graduates, uh, and uh, uh, professionals who are uh, in fields that touch uh, health care and health policy. But all of this is made possible by integrating with and building on the work that many people at Duke are doing. So hopefully you'll see that as a common theme throughout what we're presenting today as well. Um, so without further ado, I want to move on to uh, the, the content here. And to kick that off, I want to introduce Peter Eubel, who many of you know. Uh, he's based primarily at the business school. He's going to talk a bit about the, the model that we're trying to put together here between uh, research and practical policy application. Peter? Thank you. 